Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Charlie Fitzroy. I'm the CEO. Thanks. I'm the CEO of Bradhead Lithium. Um, I come to talk to you about the US battery supply chain and our projects in Arizona and Nevada. Um, this is talking about some forward looking statements. Here's the disclaimer. Um, Bradhead Lithium is a AIM TSXV OTCQB listed Lithium Explorer and Developer with projects in Arizona and Nevada. We've got Lithium Brines up in Nevada, our Eureka and Wilson projects. And then we have two clay projects in Arizona, which is our Wiki up in Basin. And then we have our San Domingo Pegmatite District down in Arizona as well. Company uh, was listed back in 2021. We are well funded. We've got just under US 7 million in the bank. We also have another 5.5 million on the way from a royalty transaction we did with Lithium Royalty Corporation. We recently listed. listed. Um, we did that in late 2021. So we get f funding from royalty on our clay projects, which is based in Wikiup, when we increase our resources. We've got a current resource at our basin project of about 370,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. And when we increase our resources to 1 million tons, we get another $2.5 million. And then we increase it to 2.5 million tons, we get another $3 million. So we're in a very strong position from a funding point of view for, for our projects currently to be able to do the work we need to do this year. Um, we are located in the US, we're in Arizona, Nevada. I'm not going to go too much into depth. I think everyone's fully aware of the developing U.S. battery supply chain and the location where we're at is, is fantastic for that. You know, we have tier one infrastructure. We're in the U.S. again, um, all, all nearby. We are, we're very close to Phoenix, about an hour up road from Phoenix. Um, the key thing as well with Bradder is the projects we're developing, the Basin project is the most developed clay project and San Domingo is the most developed pegmatite project. They've all got either existing mines or uh, active mines on or around the claim. So again, not, not greenfield sites. And ESG is very much at the heart of Brad Ahead. We've been doing that from day one. You know, in the US, being able to socialize and operate is a key thing. Permitting is a key thing. So we need to make sure we're engaging with our local stakeholders and tribes in the area. It, it's the right thing. And it also it enables us to, to have our social license to operate. And again, with Brad, a key thing is the split geological risk. It sets us apart from a lot of our peers. We have brines, clays, and pegmatites. Um, we've got very supportive shareholders um, and board. Board owns about 20% of the company. We've got some large shareholders in there who've been there from very early on. So very strong place for Bradder and well funded, as I said. From a management and board point of view, um, I'm, I'm Charlie, I'm the CEO, I'm a, I'm a geologist. Um, I spend a lot of time in metals mining M&A, equity research, asset management, and most recently corporate development uh, at China Molly. Ian Stalker is our chairman. Ian has worked in mining for 40 plus years, spent 30 years in Africa, developed 12 mines himself. And then Jim Mellon's our largest shareholder. So again, very strong management and board team and our advisors there on, on the right hand side of the screen. ESG advisor, technical advisor is Don Haynes. Don Haynes, very well known in the lithium world. And then Yatendra Sharma is our processing expert um, based in Australia. So very strong team. We really understand how to grow uh, small, small companies and return value to shareholders. So this is Basin and San Domingo, Arizona, centrally located around Wickenburg, enables us to keep our team lean. Um, Basin, as I was talking about earlier, we're in the process of drilling right now. We're going to have our um, fourth MRE out later this year. We've had three previously. And as you can see from the chart here, we have a very low discovery cost at Basin. Um, look at the chart there. You've got going from nickel down to lithium. You know, lithium in the Western world discovery costs about $19 a ton. We're down at eleven dollars a ton, and you look at the long-term price for lithium; it's looking at twenty thousand dollars a ton. It's a very good discovery cross price for long-term incentives. So we're in a very strong position, and it enables us to prove up a, a lot of resources at a relatively low cost. We've just finished a program, a drilling program on our pegmatite project, which I'll talk through in a little bit. That was the first program, so we don't have those metrics for the X. We don't have a resource at the pegmatites, but for the clays, very low discovery cross right now. Um, Low carbon footprint lithium, we are developing our projects in the US for the US market, which cuts out this transport link from South America, Australia to China and then onwards. Uh, that's the key thing of Brada. We're developing all the projects in the US for the US market where very little travel going to be from the mine to the end user. And that's the key dis differentiator for us between projects around the world. <coughs> so going to the projects, this is our San Domingo Pegmatite district, it's a 23 square kilometer district in Arizona. Previously mined back in the 40s and 50s at a very small scale uh, for the defense purposes, mined for spodumene, average grade from those five, six mines you see mentioned, about 2.75% Li2O. Um, so we know there's lithium there from the previous mine and it's in spodumene. 
um, we have done surface sampling, s soil sampling, geophysical work, and also we've just finished up our first drill program, which is a 7,300 meter program, just to really scout the area and to drill into previously identified targets to understand what's going on at depth. Because the, the idea at San Domingo is that we have small showings at surface with a bigger feeder system at depth, and that's what we're trying to understand. You'll see on the left-hand side of the screen there, we've got our best intercept, which is hole 24. We've got 32 meters at 1.6% Li2O. Well, what does that mean? Well, you look at Australia, where the majority of pegmatites are, you know, looking at average grades for resources between 1% to 1.4%, and then cutoff grades, you know, anything as low as 0.4%, 0.5%. So it, that is a very good result. And the fact this is our first program we've done there is fantastic. And more importantly, in the, all the holes we've drilled, about 60% of them we've seen mineralization. So from a first pass program, it's a fantastic result. And we're looking forward to our follow-up program later this year. We just put an RNS out this morning, which is identifying the results from the last set of assays from this program, and also the map up there, which is our soil sampling. We did an initial soil sampling last year, and it was really promising and really helpful in identifying this is a lithium cesium tantalum style system. And this soil sampling program has, we think, we think confirmed that, and also given us follow-up targets. And that's what we're doing right now. We've got guys out in the field who are doing structural mapping to help identify our follow-up drill targets. You'll see this map here, and you'll see the trend from the northeast to southwest. It's a nine kilometer strike, and we've got mineralization across the whole nine kilometers. With pegmatites, you have a, a source unit, and then the pegmatites are in place, and the key thing is the distance from that source unit, source um, granite. We believe we are in the sweet spot here. We have a zone of mineralization because outside of that zone, you get no less, mis less, myth <laughs> less lithium. And before that zone, you get less lithium too. And we're in that sweet spot. And that's what the souls are helping us understand is the geochemistry of that zonation. And that's the important thing to look into for our follow-up program, which is later this year. This first program, which you'll see up on the screen right now, phase one and phase two, as I said, we hit mineralization about 60% of our holes, really good intercepts. Top one is 32 meters, 1.6%, but lots of other intercepts which are really promising and which is leading us on to the next step. So the map here you'll see is a, it's not to scale, and it is just to understand, help us un explain what we think is going on there. You'll see the red line. Below the red line, there is no drill data. And that's just what our geologists are theorizing about what could be below it, below the whole nine kilometer we have. And that's why this next program is so important and what we're doing, what we are now. We're doing the structural mapping program, which is bringing together all the data from the geophysics we've done, the soil sampling, and um, and all the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and also the recent drill program. And that's building into this 10,000 meter program later this year. And from the soil sampling, we identified areas to follow up. And then we've been ground truthing those areas and seeing at surface more outcrops of pegmatite of a spodumene, which we hadn't previously seen. So the soil sampling has been fantastically useful for that. We also are looking at existing targets, which are going to form part of the drill program. This is our Morning Star project um, district, which is just down to the southwest of that nine kilometer strike. I've just jumped back. So you see Morning Star just down there in the southwest of that nine kilometer strike. That was previously drilled back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, so the last century. Um, and we know there is a spodumene bearing pegmatites in that zone. So again, that's going to form part of this next program, as long as other targets, which this soil sampling, the structural mapping, the geophysics helped us identify, which stretched the whole length of this nine kilometer. And that's the key thing, the district scale. Because why is the pegmatite so exciting for us? Well, pegmatites are very well understood. The capital cost for a plant is much lower than say a brine or, or a clay. And also it'd be easier to get into production than other assets. And you're making intermediate product. And there's places in the US popping up who need spodumene concentrate, like Tesla's uh, spodumene conversion facility in Texas, which is planned to start up next year. That's why we're so excited about that. And also, looking at valuations point of view, pegmatites are up here, clays and brines, sorry, brines and clays. So from a valuation point of view, that's the key thing about Brad. We're really excited about getting going on this next phase of drilling to help really under show the market what we believe we have here from a district scale potential. So that's the pegmatites, and that's one of Brad's projects. We also have our clays and brines, and our clay project basin which we started drilling at quite recently we are in the process of getting towards our fourth MRE update in since 2018 so you'll see basin down in the bottom right of that map it's just next to Freeport's Baghdad copper mine which has been in production for 100 years so again 
basin is in an area with existing mines. We have a speciality clay mine on the southern edge of our basin project, so it is not a greenfield site. So this is the basin project, 17 square kilometers. You'll see the outline of our current resource on the bottom right there. It looks like a sort of, I think it looks like a poodle. Um, we are started drilling on our basin east extension, and this is important because this is the first set of drilling outside of our basin east claim block. And that's adding another two and a half square kilometers potential for resource expansion at our basin project. And we've released uh, last week the first five holes, the geological intercepts. And what we're seeing is the north, the, the upper clay zone, which we theorized to thicken to the northwest, is thickening to the northwest. And that's important because the upper clay zone is the high grade unit. And the average upper clay thickness on the basin east current resource is about 30 meters. We're looking at upwards of 70 meters to the northwest, and that's what we're looking to thicken towards Basin West, West Extension, where we're in the process of permitting for plan of operations now. And you can see from the from the table just down there, potential from resource expansion uh, for us at this project. So we are very excited about this program finishing up and the, and the fourth MRE in the space of a few years coming out later this year. And this is it in close up. You'll see the cross section there shows the, um, the movement from hole 08, which is one of our previous holes from back in 21 going towards hole 5 which is that first hole across the creek uh, and showing the, the upper clay unit thickening and the continuous sequence so that's why we're very excited about getting these results back and we'll get the assays out to the market as soon as we can so on to our brine projects and the brines we have up in Nevada again very prospective but right now we are focusing all our funds on developing the clays and the pegmatite projects because they are easiest for us to operate as a small team. The market's what they are. We don't be wasting any cash whatsoever. So we are in discussions with other parties on potential for JV in these projects, but you know, both these projects are very interesting. Uh, Wilson, our Wilson project, we've got a lithium in surface up to 180 ppm. A Eureka, about 550 ppm. Both very prospective. We've done MT surveys, identifying potential brine reservoirs at depth at both. And then at Wilson also, we have the potential for a, a clay structure too. So both very exciting projects and interesting follow-up targets. So you'll see from this map here, um, this timeline, we've got our Basin project and our San Domingo project, which is the key focus for us this year. A lot of catalysts on the way. Um, we've just put our last results out from San Domingo. We put the soils out today, which is all building to that starting that secondary program later this year. We're really going to identify a lot more what's going on there over a larger area. Uh, Basin, we started drilling recently. We're having that second, sorry, that fourth MRE out uh, towards the end of this um, Q3. Um, so a lot happening there, those two projects. Um, as I said, the brines and wiki up on hold for the moment, but really focusing on the projects where we see maximum potential for the company. And again, you know, ESG is something which we've been very good at from the start from Brada, because for us in the US, permitting is the key thing and social license to operate is everything. So we've been engaging with our local stakeholders, uh, the tribes in the area, everyone to make sure we're working for the long term here because we want to develop these projects for long term. And that's the key thing in the US alongside of water conservation, which is something we are working on with our, our local consultants out there on water, water conservation initiatives at both Basin and also San Domingo. Um, and I'm coming up to end my comments, uh, end up my presentation. So I'd like to ask if there's any, any questions from the audience at all before uh, signing off. adjustments impact your your water usage um we haven't had any impact for us as of yet we're, we're still a bit early stage for that because we are in the process of doing those water conservation initiatives that's something i'll probably be able to answer better after we've had that report finalized yep yeah, well, so far, um, the most of the best results we've had are pretty shallow. So that 32 meters I spoke about is only a 30 meters depth, so really quite near surface. Um, it looks like there's a lot of targets at surface. Um, so yeah, we'd be doing open pit where we can, and then we'd see where the mine goes. But uh, yeah, it looks like open pit would be the best case forward. Thank you.